Hey everybody, it's me, Dr. May. How are you doing today? I hope you guys are doing good. Um, if not, you came to the right place because today we're gonna do one of my favorite DBT skills called distract with accepts. Technically called wise mind accepts, but we always kind of called it distract with accepts because it's mainly a distracting skill. Okay, so let's start. I'm gonna pull up the file for us and we'll do that. I'll make the screen a little bigger. And here we go. All right. So here we go. So this is another distress tolerance skill. So just a quick review. So distress tolerance is a skill you could use when you want to get through a difficult time, a stressful time, an emotional time without making the situation worse. Situation worse. Yes, slurred my words a little bit there. They didn't want to make it worse. So anyway, uh, it's, it's how you can get through it and survive it and maybe even grow from it. And there's a whole bunch of distress tolerance skills we could try. So this one's actually kind of a compound skill. Um, but anyway, um, it's related to distraction. So what are distraction skills? It's temporarily taking your mind off of your problems just to give yourself a break. Okay, so nobody could deal with distress 24 seven and be able to feel comfortable with that. It's, it could be overwhelming, um, and then it just it could really wear us out, okay? So when we distract ourselves, the idea is to use safe things to temporarily take our mind off of our stress, okay? So safe is the key word. There's probably other things you've done before, um, impulsive things perhaps, probably your target behaviors that had to do with taking your mind off of your stress. Um, it's very well known that self-injury and addiction and eating disorders and so forth, give ourselves something else to think about besides the deeper issue or the major stressor that's going on. So the effort to distract ourselves was there, but maybe the format needs a little bit work on uh, working on, okay? So we're gonna provide, in this example, a lot of different safe ways we could use to distract ourselves, right? So the desire to distract makes sense, but we're just gonna do it in a safe and healthy way. And a couple of quotes I like that are related to distraction skills are kind of listed here. So one is, take a break before you break. Okay, so don't push yourself into dealing with stress so intensely that you start to fall apart. It's not worth it, right? We got to pace ourselves. And another one that I heard recently that I kind of liked is checking out so you could check in, right? So we're temporarily checking out, taking a break from our problems. So when we come back, we have a little bit more energy and we could handle it in perhaps a more wise mind way. Okay, there's another concept. This is not a DBT concept, but it's one that um, a lot of people are talking about these days, especially in the area of trauma. And they call it the window of tolerance. Okay, and it's kind of a neat metaphor that I wanted to share with you because it's very related to distress tolerance. So in the window of tolerance, if you imagine a window kind of like the one on the screen, and you think about sitting in a room, and maybe the room is a little hot. So it's hot, so you open the window and you let some nice cool air in. And the cool air starts coming in and coming in, and now it's really getting chilly in the room. So you may wanna to start to close the window or partially close the window. And then if it gets hot again, you start to open the window up a little bit more again, right? And you kind of make those adjustments so that the temperature's comfortable. So distraction skills kind of help us with that. It kind of helps us stay at a comfortable level, a level that we can tolerate of our distress. And the window of tolerance really represents like the amount of emotions and stress we could handle without falling apart. And for some of us, that window might be really um, narrow. Like you just may be able to open it a crack and let just a tiny bit in without falling apart. Other people, as they get used to things and tolerate distress better, they start to open their window a little bit more and allow a little bit more in without having to do target behaviors or make the situation worse. So by giving you these distraction skills, it allows you to have more leeway and more freedom to handle it without falling apart, okay? So that's the whole idea of distracting skills. All right, so here's one of the other famous uh, DBT acronyms, all right? So remember, distract with accepts, and each letter stands for something. And in my experience, this is a really popular skill. People really like distracting skills. And when I ask people, what skills did you use last week? A lot of times people say, I did distracting skills, okay? So if you learn to do it right, it really can benefit you. All right, so in the next slides, we're gonna go through all the things that are listed here. 
And it's important to really recognize all of them because what I found is a lot of people mostly do distract with A. They do the activities, but don't always think about the other ones. Like they don't always come to mind as easily. So this will be a good refresher. Even if you're aware of distract with accepts, um, it's a good time to just remind yourself of the other possibilities that are chock full of, uh, you know, uh, skills in this accepts uh, acronym. Okay, so let's let's go. Um, so here we go. So the first one, distract with activities. All right, again, the most popular one I've found. And you kind of could get more bang for your buck by doing activities you, you usually like to do anyway, that maybe you're already comfortable with, that are already part of your routine, but doing them on purpose when you're stressed out and you need to take a break. So for example, I like to play the piano, right? I might be playing the piano sometimes anyway, just for the heck of it, but sometimes it makes me feel better if I'm stressed out and I decide to sit down at the piano and play. So that's an example of how I can take an activity that I already am familiar with and to just use it on purpose when I actually need it the most, okay? At times you might wanna try something new, of course, you know, you can explore different options, and explore which activities are the best ones for you when you're stressed out and the ones you could actually focus on. So for example, like you might like to read, but if you're really upset, reading might be hard. It might be hard to concentrate. So maybe listening to music when you're upset works better, okay? So experiment, try different things. Don't be afraid to try something new, okay? And give it a chance. What I've found with myself and with other people that I work with is that sometimes if you give up too fast, a distraction doesn't work as well. But if you still do it and give it a, like a couple of hours, do one activity after another and kind of start to fill up your day, um, eventually you start to realize maybe I'm not as upset as I was before. Okay, so give it a fair amount of time and make sure that you're in the right spot with that. Okay, and the idea is to eventually come back to your problems and not just distract forever. It's not an avoidance mechanism. It's um, just taking a break. All right, so I just want to emphasize that. Okay, so the next one, um, distract by contributing, okay, about giving to others. And if you think about it, during the times when you are most stressed out or going through something tough, um, it's normal to kind of focus on yourself, right? We're, we kind of obsess about things, we're worried about our situation, we're preoccupied with our ruminating thoughts and so forth. So the idea behind the distract with contributing is that it takes your mind off of your problems and it puts it on something else or somebody else, okay? And in the process, while you're giving, you might actually get some positive responses from people, which might make you feel good. Like if someone's grateful for the help you're offering or for the kind words you're saying to them or maybe a nice note you dropped to them or texted them, you know, it actually could change your mood because now you feel like you did something good, you did something nice. Um, I would say be careful with this skill if you tend to always be giving, giving, giving to everyone. Like, especially let's say you have young kids at home and you're always spending your time with your kids and helping your kids. The contributing may, you might think, well, well, but I'm contributing all day long. That's not helping me. So in that case, maybe this isn't the aspect of distract with accepts that's right for you. Okay. You have to like use it to, you know, with the way that benefits you. Okay. So I just listed a few examples below. This is something to think about, and of course, there's many more things. Um, in, in just a small way, something you could add into your day without too much trouble. Um, the first thing is you could just listen to somebody. If someone wants to talk, instead of sharing your problems, just hear what they have to say or try to cheer them up. That might be something nice. Um, help somebody work through their problem. And sometimes even by helping them and listening to yourself and what you're saying, you could kind of hear your own advice and your own wisdom, and that might be something you could even use. Who knows, right? Um, you could write somebody a nice card or a letter or a text. Um, you could just be kind to somebody walking into a store, maybe holding a door open for somebody, um, giving someone a compliment. So all these are free. It doesn't involve like donating money or making a big commitment. But in a, a broader sense, you know, you might end up wanting to volunteer or do something where, you know, you're making a bigger commitment to help people. And that's just something you want to build into your routine. So it's really up to you, but consider the contributing skill. It really does help a lot. And even research has found that altruism and helping others in a pure kind of a way, even boosts our immune system and makes us happier. So all these things have been you know, researched and looked into and 
it, there's a lot of positive effects. And you'll probably see for yourself if you give it a whirl. Okay, next one, distract with comparisons, okay? And so what this one is, it's a kind of gives you perspective by not seeing your problem as like the worst thing in the world. If you really think about it, like think about other times in your life or other people and what they're going through, um, you really can kind of see like maybe it's not as bad as I thought. It kind of gives you more of a perspective. So when you broaden the, the scope of what you're looking at and all the possibilities of what could happen in your life, perhaps now is not as bad as you think. You know, and something could, could come into your mind that would balance the way you see it, okay? So another part of comparisons, because um, it doesn't really fit in accepts, a G doesn't really fit in accepts as a word. So, but it's really a lot about gratefulness. Um, if you're grateful for what you have, even though you're suffering right now, there probably are a few things you could think of that you're glad about. Um, and that kind of helps balance you too. So even if it's something like, I'm grateful I'm still alive and I woke up this morning and I have another chance today. Or I'm grateful I have a family that cares about me. Or I'm grateful I have this one friend that still listens to me. Or I'm grateful I have a job. Or I'm grateful I don't have COVID-19. There's probably a few basic life things that come to mind that help you see your situation differently. All right, so that's also part of comparisons. So this next slide, um, I often put this on the blackboard when I'm teaching a group, but I'm gonna I made a slide for it uh, of it for you so you could see what I'm talking about with perspective. All right, so if you don't use comparison skill and you're an emotional mind, you might see your problem as like the worst thing ever and everything else and everybody else is doing better than you are. And that makes you feel kind of lousy, okay? But if you start using comparison skill, think of how things could be worse and how other things in the future might be better for you and things like that, you kind of see it somewhere balanced, like on the bottom half, okay? And that makes you feel like a little bit better, which changed the way you get through the crisis. Okay, hope that makes sense. Next, E, distract with other emotions, okay? So this one's a little related to the activities one, but just another way of thinking about it, okay? So there's activities you could do where you could say, well, if I do this activity, it might change the way I feel. Like if you already have this big ball of emotional energy and it's there anyway, you can't just like make it go away. You might be able to reshape it into a different emotion that's a little bit easier for you to manage. So for example, like let's say you're filled with emotional energy and you watch a scary movie. And now you create a little bit of tension and fear, but it's not like the bad kind of fear where you're actually afraid for your life. But it's like entertaining fear, so it's okay. Or um, if you have a sense of humor and you like, want to watch a comedy or like a comedian on stage or something like that, or like a video of it, like that might create, you know, more laughter and humor and joy. And that's a different emotion. It's still an emotion, but it's different from what you felt and it's easier to feel. Okay, so it's an activity, but it's an activity that deliberately changes your emotion. Okay, makes sense? All right, now, P, distracting by temporarily pushing away, okay? And again, like I said before, this is not an avoidance mechanism. We're not trying to squash it for good. We're not trying to take some mental scissors and snip it out of our life, okay? We're just giving ourselves a break. And this one's a little more challenging because this is more of a mental skill. It's more of a thinking skill. Whereas some of the other ones are more action skills and behavior skills. And it's easier to do a behavior when you're upset than it is to do a thought. So if you're really dysregulated and really emotional, the, the behavior ones might work better. Or the ones where you change your body chemistry, like in the tip skill. But if you're able to think more clearly and have some control over your thinking process, you could mentally tell yourself that you're gonna allow yourself to push it away. And the key word is allow. Because sometimes we're afraid to let it go. We're afraid to stop thinking about that thing that's been on our mind all day. Because we feel like if we just keep thinking about it, somehow we'll be able to fix it or solve it. And a lot of times it doesn't really work. But we think that, okay? So below are some images you could use to help you push away. Because it's definitely hard to stop your thinking, okay? So one, uh, if you look at that guy, he's kind of on the blackboard trying to push his problems aside. So you literally imagine yourself pushing it away for a little while. Um, another one is some people like to imagine it 
kind of like locked in some kind of a box or a safe and maybe put on a shelf somewhere and then you close the closet door and you know kind of leave it there for a few hours so that might work for you too um you might want to bury them in a hole somewhere and just throw some dirt on top and just leave it underground but mark it with an x so you could find it later okay but you might have your own images whatever works for you okay so and then again like it says in the bottom um so then when you feel calmer um, when you have support available, if you need it, and when you have enough time to work it through, you know, take the problems back out and look at it again. Sometimes even having a good night's sleep makes a difference. And when you wake up in the morning, it feels a little differently. Um, that's a, probably a different skill, but, but the idea is if it gives you the space and the time to think about it, it, it usually feels a little better later. Okay, T, distracting with other thoughts. Since we can't always stop our minds from thinking and completely push thoughts away, we might be able to have some control over thinking something else, okay? You probably want to think of something that's not very emotional, that's maybe a little bit more left-brained, a little bit more reasonable mind, so to speak. Um, so I listed a few examples below, and again, just, just examples. You could think of other things also. So you might want to deliberately remember a good time in your life. Maybe some time where you had a positive experience with a person, or maybe a vacation, or you were feeling more successful, uh, maybe when you use a skill well, and you kind of purposely recall that and run that through your mind. So that could be a nice thing to think about, besides your problem. Um, some people um, are more spiritual, religious, they like to pray, or maybe there's a mantra that helps you that you could repeat to yourself, um, this too shall pass. Everything is as it should be, you know, things like that, whatever works for you. Um, if you're more of a music oriented person, maybe there's a song you like to think about. But not a song that's gonna drag you down further and make it worse, but maybe a song that is just kind of neutral for you, but maybe is um, enjoyable. And you wanna kind of like run through that song in your mind and think about it. Um, some people who are a little bit more mathematically oriented might count or do math in their head. Some people like, add up numbers by sevens or something like that, or you know, kind of do little mental tricks like that, go through timetables. Uh, that might be something different to think about that's kind of neutral. Um, maybe um, if you like sports, you kind of like think about a recent game you're watching, or uh, maybe some players you like, or go through stats in your mind, or if there's a TV show you like, run through the latest episode in your mind. How much do you remember? What were the characters saying and doing? Things like that. Um, and another one which kind of grounds you in the present moment is kind of like looking around the room you're in and maybe just using your observe skill, which is a mindfulness skill, and naming, which is a described skill, different colors in the room. You know, how many reds do you see? Or how many blues do you see? What are all the blue things? Things like that can kind of keep yourself busy. And if you're using your left brain to do that kind of activity, it calms down your amygdala and your right brain. So it gives yourself something non-emotional to calm you down. All right, so a lot of little bonuses in there. Okay, so finally, we've come to the end. Whoops. Okay, S, distract with other intense sensations. So if you're paying attention and you know a little more about DBT, you'll realize that this one sounds a lot like the tip skill, okay? So the tip skill came after distract with accepts was uh, part of DBT, and they probably lifted it a little bit from this one and just expanded on it, okay? so. Let's think about target behaviors. What are one of the things that target behaviors do is they create intense sensations that can distract us from our emotional pain, right? So sometimes it creates physical pain and that's easier to handle than the feelings we have, okay? So here, we're also creating intense sensations, but safely, okay? So the idea of needing more intensity in order to like express ourselves or release that energy makes a lot of sense. We just have to find a safe way to do it, okay? And lots of things to experiment with. Um, a lot of people I work with really like stress balls. Give them out whenever people want them. Um, you could do that if that feels good to you. Um, that's one sense, it's more of a physical sense. Of course, exercise would be another physical thing to do. And I, for tip, intensely exercise, so you can see the repetition here. Um, Eating uh, spicy or sour food or candy might be interesting, creates a whole different sensation. Um, one time I had a group and we did warheads, like the picture I have here. 
And man, when those things are sour, it's hard to think about anything else. That's some real distraction there, at least for a little while. Okay. Um, also, if you're into music, sometimes maybe you want to listen to loud music because that's just the mood you're in. And that's an intense sensation. Maybe some really hardcore, heavy metal rap kind of stuff. All right. And that might be like just what you need, that loud stuff. Um, so that's a hearing sense, right? And finally, also sounds like the tip skill with the tip your temperature tea part is holding ice cubes, cold shower, splashing cold water on your face. Again, when you're dealing with that super cold, hard to think about anything else, right? We've even done groups where we held on to snow, all right? Convenient, just walk outside in the winter time and try that. In summer, not so much, but refrigerator could always have uh, some ice cubes perhaps, all right? So that's the end of distract with accepts. Oh man, that was a lot of stuff, wasn't it? Okay, so see how complex the skill is? It's probably more than you even thought, <laughs> okay? So give it a fair chance. See if you could try the different components. Don't just narrow it down to the A, right? There's other good stuff in there that's worth exploring. So even if you were in group and they gave you the assignment to do distract with accepts this week, you might only end up trying like a piece of it, but Give yourself the assignment of maybe each week try a different piece, try a different letter and see how it goes. All right, you never know what's gonna work for you and when. And um, another thing is that even if something doesn't work now, a few months from now, you might be in a different place and the same thing might help you then, okay? So give it a fair chance, use your skills, okay? And go forth and be mindful and I'll see you next time.